Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to be using a library called Isomorphic Fetch to pull from the GitHub API. Uh, so let's just dive right in and we left our project with a package JSON created with a few dependencies and a scripts tag to run our development build of our application using Next. So we are just going to add a new dependency called Isomorphic Fetch. You can use Yarn or NPM to install that. And once that's added, it will also be added to the package.json file. So with that, that allows us to safely call using the fetch library uh, within the browser, or if we're on the server side, it will use that version on the server side. So we're not loading too many libraries, or we can use the browser if that one exists. Okay, so with that in mind, we are going to create a file inside of our pages directory. I'm going to call this index.js. Now we can safely remove the .keep file because we're no longer going to need that. That just kind of kept the folder pages intact if we were to commit it to GitHub uh, or your Git repository. So with this file created, we're first going to um, need to export a React, React class. Uh, we'll call this home and that will extend React dot component we don't need to import react because that is given to us by next.js is a default it assumes you're using react and it assumes you want to use it inside of the pages directory and all your other files so it doesn't it doesn't uh, require you to import that at the top um, so this page will of course um, we need to treat it like regular react we wrap it in a div tag here and on this page we're just going to First of all, display a form that on submit will call a function um, called handle submit for now. And inside of here, uh, we will create an input type of text and a placeholder of um, uh, type GitHub username dot dot dot, and then on change. In line, we're just going to grab the event and use an ES2015 arrow functions. We are going to call this set state and we are going to set the username to be e.target.value. And that's the target of the event that we're running. Uh, the on change event, which is the target, is, a, is the input text. And then, of course, that value is the value that you type in the input. If we close that up, and we should see that this is what you should have written here. And it's just a simple input form. If we run yarn dev, and then if we open our browser, and we should see a username here. Now, if we try and type in here, it's gonna insert that like here. And if we open the Chrome developer tools and you open the React tab, we should in fact see a uh, home component here and that has username Jamie Barton. We can change that to be my username on GitHub, no trab, and it will update the state within React. You can obviously install these React developer tools. The links are in the comments below on how and where you can find that. Um, but with that in mind, that's not really interesting right now. It's It shows that it's working, it's connected to our state. But what we want to do is then on submit, call out to the GitHub API, maybe just bring our profile picture back and a name. So let's do that now. So now we will um, define this function here and we'll pop that above um, and we'll call that handle submit which takes the event and we need to prevent the form from doing its default thing so we just use e.prevent default and that kind of stops that. Now using ES2015 destructuring uh, we will grab the username from state and then we will use the fetch library to call out to the GitHub API. And I'll give you an example of um, what that 
response looks like now. Uh, if we pop over to GitHub, and this is the URL that we're going to call to in this username part here is what you're going to insert via the text area. Um, it gives us a few things back that we can we can use the login, the ID, the avatar, and how many repos and gists we have and followers and how many people you are following. Um, so it's quite interesting and it's there's there's some data there that we can use to further build our application. But this is all we're going to do in this episode is display the avatar and the name in our in our uh, on our page when we hit go uh, from our input. So uh, we need to import um, fetch from isomorphic fetch was the library we installed before and that allows us to uh, use this word here and this is going to return a promise um, so then response we need to treat the response as JSON and then we will use user and we'll do this dot set state and we'll update our state to include uh, the user and then obviously catch any errors and we'll just do a console.error for now. Um, we can probably uh, properly update the page display an error as we go through error handling later on in these videos. But for now, we're just gonna call out to the API, get the response, turn it to JSON and update our React state to include all of that information we've seen here. So all this will be available through our state and props. Cool, uh, that's it for the handle submit function. I'm just going to set some default state. The username is going to be null and the user is going to be null. And that just um, sets those out there. That's not really necessary at this moment. I just like to do it because I can visually see what my state is going to have uh, within it. This of course is obviously going to be an object and this is going to be a string. If you were using flow or TypeScript, this is where you would define those types there, um, but we're not going to do that uh, for this video. And next we will just create a button. Uh, button uh, type is submit, and we will just have some text inside of there called go. Then above we will create um, if we have um, if we have uh, a user, so let's grab the user from our state, and then if a user is present, we're going to create a new div, and inside of here we'll create an h3, um, and that will have user dot name, and then we'll create a paragraph tag and that will include a user dot. Uh, let's have a look what we could put in. We'll just put a company for now and close that up. And above all of that, I will insert um, the user's avatar using user dot avatar URL. We'll set an alt tag here for user dot login and it, for now we're just going to create a width. We'll style this up uh, later on using style GSX which is built into Next.js but for now we're just going to make this look like a regular HTML and default CSS which isn't very nice uh, but it kind of serves the purpose for now. So with that done we check our console looks good and we pop over to our browser. If we uh, insert a username you'll see our state has been updated here and we type and we hit go um, oh just hit hit that there we've got an error so no trap is not defined okay no trap is not defined okay okay no traps not defined uh, okay cool you're probably shouting at the screen um, for that part there, but that's it. That's all the mistake was fetch api.github.com forward slash users forward slash and then the username we're grabbing from the state. Let's clear our console and type go. 
Uh, we may need to hard refresh that page. There we go, cool. So I've entered that in there and I'll enter a uh, username of my good friend Liam and hit return and then his profile picture comes up as well. So that looks to be all working and it's pulling from the GitHub API. If we check the network tab, we should then be able to check the response here and we'll see some information come back there, which is cool, exactly what we want and is uh, is all working. Fetch is working, that's with Next.js. React's working, the state is working. If we check the React state, we should see inside of our home component, we have an object here, user, and that contains all of the information that we've seen from the GitHub API. So that's brilliant. We have something to use now. We've got some data that we can pass to some more uh, pages and props, and we can learn about how to do that in the next video on actually navigating from this page to the user's uh, resume page, which will list out more information. Brilliant, that's cool. That's That's got us started for that. I hope you're enjoying it. And most importantly, happy coding. Stay tuned for the next episode next week and all the best. Have a great day, guys.